Okay, first off, I don't think that the quarry is going to be fake. I'm not theorizing that everything the characters are experiencing is going to turn out to be a movie within a game or anything like that. They're not going to give this a Monkey Island 2 ending. Generally, people don't respond well to endings like that, and that's a lesson Supermassive Games has already learned. That said, the characters in the quarry literally are living inside a simulation that we're partially in control of, and it's worth taking a second to consider how the developers might be looking to exploit the audience's expectations about what that might mean. What evidence has pointed in this direction? There's the survey question about glitches in the matrix and the one about simulation theory. There's the rabbit hole posted, which can refer to any deep dive into a subject, but when put on a computer monitor, it immediately calls to mind the Matrix with all of its Alice in Wonderland references. Then there's the fact that the quarry stars David Arquette, who by his very presence will ensure that articles about the game are all going to be referencing Scream. Then we have the Path Chosen logo, which, unlike the bearings notifications in Dark Pictures games, goes out of its way to call attention to itself. Where the choice buttons are discreetly placed at the bottom of the screen, where the widescreen bars were in the VHS version of Scream, the Path Chosen notification commands all possible attention with its strange symbols making it look like an old-time computer command line. It explicitly reminds everyone that this is a video game. It recalls the in-your-face blatant gaminess of Metal Gear Solid 3. Of course, in that game it was completely justified since Spoiler alert, the whole thing is a VR training program that Solid Snake is playing. That's not a small number of clues and references, but I don't think there's going to be a super meta aspect to the quarry, in that some part of the story will prove to be completely artificial. I will, however, ask a question. Are the developers of the quarry trying to make the scream of interactive movies? And if they are, what would that mean exactly? To dig into this question, we have to ask, why is Scream important? It's not because it's a particularly meta film. It's not. It's not because it's the first film to have characters realizing that they're likely in a horror movie. There were a bunch of those before it. I'd personally recommend the movie There's Nothing Out There, which is a fantastic low-budget horror comedy. It goes well into the realm of meta parody. At one point, a character swings on a boom mic, but it's absolutely worth watching. No, Scream's innovation was to populate the film with characters who are aware of the genre of the film they're starring in and have them use that information not to fight back against genre conventions, but instead to manipulate the audience and trick them into second-guessing themselves over and over again. Take, for example, the character of Billy Loomis, who, spoiler alert, is the killer. It couldn't be more obvious that this guy is the villain. He's introduced with the song Don't Fear the Reaper. He's callous to the point of obvious psychopathy, as he tells Sidney to just get over her mother's death and have sex with him. There's a scene where he and Stu physically threaten Randy for no good reason. He shows up at Sydney's window just as the killer disappears. It's painfully obvious that he's the killer in basically every scene he's in. The film's genius is that by having characters talk about genre conventions and open with a quiz asking how much they know about horror movies, it's priming them to expect a twist when there isn't one coming. It's obvious that Billy is the killer, and then Billy is the killer. The audience spends the whole time trying to figure out what's going on when it's perfectly clear as long as you don't try to outsmart the movie. Is this what the quarry is going to attempt? Look at the scene in the trailer where the characters reference every supermassive horror game in just a few seconds. Is this just a fun wink to the fans, or is it presenting the characters as the kind of people who know all about horror video games? Over the course of the game, the characters will be posed with situations where they quickly make a decision, and players will immediately start thinking not about what those characters should do in a given situation, but instead, how does supermassive games like to set up unexpected outcomes? Anyone who's played the other games is going to think about how obeying Ashley will get Chris killed, or how accepting help in Little Hope will doom anyone foolish enough to do it. Is this how Supermassive Games is going to trick us? Did they make the game figuring that jerks like me were going to assume that they know all of the gags and twists on the way in? Travis is so creepy in that opening that he must secretly turn out to be sympathetic like the flamethrower guy, right? Is expecting a twist going to get characters killed? Is this going to be the scream of interactive horror movies, in that it's designed to trick the very people who consider themselves the best informed and most prepared for the game? If it manages that, it really will be a worthy successor to Until Dawn.
I've been the Hidden Object Guru. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please remember to like and subscribe. Special thanks go out to my patrons, Desire, Marissa, Eduardo, Brian, and Joanne. You can always find me at my live streams, weeknights at 9 Eastern and weekends at noon. We'll see you back here for more Supermassive Games content. But until then, au revoir.